Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore Your Pain Away. Yeah! I'm back! <laughs> or I'm back. Uh, my website's jasonnewland.com and please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. There may be the occasional background sound because we've got a local foghorn that likes to uh, make... <laughs> I think there's, there's an old joke. This person learned how to whisper in a helicopter. <laughs> so there's, there's a chance you might hear their voice in the background. Hopefully not. But um, there's always a chance. This is a time of the in the morning when... Uh, people are kind of starting to wake up. Not that you're going to hear people yawning or anything. So, this, uh, I feel like I should explain what this podcast is about. It's basically, it's basically, um, me just talking. And I do focus on chronic pain relief okay so within the conversation I'll, I'll kind of talk about some stuff that i've discovered and some kind of, you know a few techniques maybe but just generally just chatting so it's, it's not a hugely focused recording it's very different probably from anything that you'll have listened to before, unless you've listened to my Let Me Bore You to Sleep podcasts. And I've got itchy ankle. Anyway, that wasn't relevant, but a lot of things aren't. Hmm. So, here's something that I've... Uh, A little experiment for you. Okay. So, I want you to focus, I don't know, I go, I'll, I'll go, I don't know which way I'm going to go for this from, um, blah, 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 blah. Okay. When we have an emotional reaction to something, we make a facial expression connected with that. So what I want you to do is, and this is going to be a bit weird because it's the opposite to what you're going to want to do. Although, the more you listen to this recording, uh, you'll start to notice that you feel different. And it might not even make sense. So why listening to this weird man rambling on about stuff? How can that change the way that you physically feel and emotionally? How can that reduce your chronic pain? And you might think, well, it doesn't make sense. So what you need to do or what you need to do, what I advise, okay, is just test it. The bottom line, right, for me, uh, and this is short, this is uh, short term thinking. Now, I, I would suggest have a little bit of long term thinking. Um, but the very, very, very least, After listening to me, after listening to this recording, how do you feel? So how do you feel before you listen? How do you feel during listening? And how do you feel afterwards? And notice if you feel better afterwards. When I say better, I mean, do you feel more relaxed. The part of your body that was causing discomfort before, 
does that f- part of your body feel less of a problem? So I try not to mention the word chronic pain, but you know, that's what this podcast is about. I mean, you could give, I try and use words like physical sensation or uh, discomfort or thing, those kinds of words because, you know, we all know what we're talking about. So uh, kind of an experiment you could do before started listening to this recording, you could sort of gauge where you are on the, you know, like between one and ten. So what level is that discomfort? Is it uh, yeah, between one and ten? Ten being the worst it could possibly be, one being pretty much nothing. Or you could do zero to ten, which is up to you. Zero makes more sense, really, doesn't it? And I don't know why I go one to ten rather than zero to ten. You do what you choose and just notice afterwards. Do the same thing. And I realize you may have fallen asleep because I am so incredibly boring that you might notice that you just fall asleep. There's no choice. There's, it's just like, just naturally happens. You drift off. But you'll only drift off if you're relaxed. And when you're relaxed, your physical sensations will also relax. So you'll feel better than you did before. So when I, when I say the word better, I don't mean, uh, healed in a sense of uh better is a weird word isn't it it can like when it comes to medical conditions uh i feel better oh so everything's fine now no i just feel better and then some people say i feel better so if someone's got had a cold or they've got tonsillitis and they've taken medication how do you feel now yeah i feel better now and they'll say that whether they feel marginally better than they did, so you know, or completely healed, they'll use the same terminology. I feel better. So it doesn't give a clear explanation or a clear description. So when I say better, I mean feeling different in a positive way feeling more relaxed. And the, I study chronic pain, not, not as a, a professional, um, you know, person, not as, not in university or college or anything like that. I just study it in my own time. It's just a subject that I've been interested in for over 20 years. And I like to find out the latest uh, discoveries with ways of helping pain and how, you know, how it works, how the whole physical uh, concept and the, the processes work. And neurologists and, you know, neurology and, that is that has changed the way it changed the world of pain in a way that is phenomenal as far as the studies go and you know for example there was this old idea that when the when the brain was first mapped which is phenomenal that they ever sort of started to sort of notice that parts of the brain lit up when certain things were being done, you know, and like, well, that's the part where people have memory and that's the part where people think about the future and that's the part that's uh, for smell and all that, you know, all that stuff. Well, more recently, they've realized, come to realize that 
it's not just one part of the brain. It can be many, many, many different parts of the brain are activated. For example, when someone has uh, pain, chronic pain, or it's a physical discomfort, it's not just one part of the body, or one part of the brain rather, that's activated. It's lots of different parts. And a lot of it is emotional. Which makes sense, because it's an emotional thing, isn't it? It's like, no, it's physical. No, I don't mean it's not physical. I mean, it's, it's, it's emotionally disruptive. It's, it's horrible. It's, you know, pain is horrible. So it's emotionally as well as physically horrible. And what I notice, because I've got arthritis on my lower back, is the more concern I have, the more energy I give the focus on that pain, the more, well, the worse it gets. See, I can actually activate the pain in my back just by thinking, I'm doing it now, I'm thinking about it, I'm focusing on it. Wasn't bothering me before at all. I was talking to you for the first 10 minutes of this recording just now. I'm guessing, yeah, it's 11 minutes and 41 seconds. So wasn't even thinking about my back. Wasn't giving me any problems at all. Still not giving me any problems, but I'm, I'm focusing on it. I can't have a little bit of problems getting it back now. That's another thing you, you might notice. Sometimes when you try and focus on it, it seems to disappear. It's a little bit like, you know, um, sometimes someone will go to the dentist and they'll like, have a toothache and they'll go to the dentist and they'll forget which tooth it is that's aching because the tooth that it seems to just go away. It like hides and it's so annoying. Not that anyone wants toothache, but if any one time you need it, it's when you're at the, actually at the dentist so you can get some help. Or if you've got a pain in your leg or something and you go to the doctors and it's just gone away. Like, why have you gone away now? You've been here all weekend and now I go to the doctors and you're not there anymore. And the weird thing is, you don't want the pain, but in that moment you do. So when you do want it, it won't come. Which is a weird psychology, isn't it? Like wanting the chronic pain does not produce chronic pain. Which is strange. I mean, you could say, well, who who would want chronic pain? Generally, no, you wouldn't. But in that moment, when you're about to be examined by the doctor, you want to you want your body to be examined. You want it, you know, you want the symptom to be there, even if it is just for the duration of the doctor visit. Just, you know, because at least then you can get the medical attention that is required. But when it disappears, it's just weird. The whole idea of just, oh, it's gone. Where is it? It was there a minute ago. Wait a minute, I better go back and just retrace my steps. Maybe I dropped it on the floor. Uh, excuse me, you haven't seen my chronic pain anywhere, have you? It's, yeah, my back pain. I, I, I had it when I was on the bus. It was just weird how our physical sensations can change or almost disappear. It's a little bit, um, I think our bodies, our minds actually, because our bodies and our minds are connected. I know we know that, don't we? But it seems to be this whole idea that the body and the mind, body and mind, no, it's connected. There is no separation. There's a thing called a neck, <laughs> you know, that connects us to the brain and the brain well, where is the mind? Where does it come from? No one really knows, but it's from the brain, really. It's a, 
Without the brain, there's no mind. Without the brain, there's nothing. Really, I guess. But, it's a strange concept because we, it's too surreal, isn't it, really, to get your head around. Like the brain, okay, so the brain causes the pain. Yet there's no pain in the brain. You know, I I mentioned this before. It's so, just such a weird thing. Because when we injure ourselves or when we, uh, you know, say you, you cut, cut your finger while you're washing up and you, there's a knife in there and you cut your finger by accident or even a paper cut or you, you know, that physical, that nerve signal, that signal that goes to your brain isn't pain. It's not a pain signal. It's a danger signal. So pain, there are no pain signals sent to the brain, just danger signals. And the brain decides whether or not it is a dangerous, dangerous situation or not. So if you cut your finger, it can sting. It can throw up a little bit, but you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not talking about a deep, deep cut or anything, but just like a, a general, you know, slice the end of your finger and it bleeds. It's just, you know, it's never going to stop bleeding and it does stop bleeding after like five minutes or something and it throbs a bit. And then half an hour later, you're watching telly and you've forgotten all about it. You know, it's, it's just not important to you at all because you know there's no danger there. There's absolutely nothing to worry about at all. When it first happens, it's natural. You see blood is a little bit of like, oh, we're programmed that way. You know, there's, there's now an opening. The blood's coming out. Will all the blood leave my body? Well, you know, it's not going to happen. You're not going to bleed out from a, well, I don't know that some people with, um, hemophiliacs, is it? I don't know what the situation is there with a, like a, a cut on the finger. So in that situation, someone that's a hemophiliac who there's potential with thin blood that they might bleed out. So, but that's a tiny, tiny proportion of society that, so that is a real, a real worry. There's a real reason for that to hurt and for them to be concerned. But for most people, it's not. It's just like, okay, especially when you stop the blood. It's very easy to stop the blood, put pressure on it. It's the most basic first aid that there is. Put pressure on it and it stops eventually. And when I say eventually, I don't mean after 10 years. I mean, you know, within a few minutes, it stops. And also the fact that your brain knows that it's not dangerous, doesn't need blood, doesn't need to be cleaned out because the blood cleans it, doesn't it? It cleans the wound. It sends healing properties uh, to that part of your body. Maybe it sends anesthetic in order to anesthetize that part so that it doesn't hurt. Wouldn't that be interesting? But the mind, the brain, needs to know that it's not a dangerous situation. And the way it gets that is by you, by us, by our reaction to it. So if you cut the end of your finger, by accident, of course, oh, well. It's no big deal, is it? Like a small child might do that. And it might be, oh, you know, because they don't know what's going to happen next. It might be the first time they've ever seen their own blood. It might be funny to them because it's interesting. Or it might be scary, which means they'll have more pain. If it's interesting to them, like, look at this. I've got this stuff coming out of my finger. They're not going to feel pain. Or very minimal. But if they're catastrophizing, 
and it's the end of the world and they're going to die surely because they've got this cutting off, you know, in their mind, they're going to feel tremendous amount of pain. So I find that interesting. So you might find it very boring because I feel... I feel I have a skill. It's not a skill that anyone else would want. I think I can turn interesting things into being boring. So even really interesting medical discoveries, I can make boring. Now that's a skill. And I'm the only one that's here. <laughs> I feel I'm one of the few people in the world that has this skill. It's my superpower. I prefer invisibility, to be fair. But I think if I did that, I'd end up in prison, so probably not a good idea i would oh i would do some weird things i imagine i just nothing weird weird but yeah <laughs> let's move on let's move on can you imagine being invisible it just you just do so many but at the same time no one could see you you can never have a relationship But you could just have everything you wanted, couldn't you? Just walk in, take a television, just walk out. If someone sees a television floating, it's going to be freaky for them, isn't it? It's just like, oh, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, uh, that's not happening. That's no. So, you know, no one's going to say, oh, I've got, guess what I saw today? I saw a microwave. I was in a supermarket, I saw a microwave floating through the air and just leaving out of the exit door. Sure you did. Yep. Okay, let's make another... Are you still are you still taking your meds? Blimey. So, back to physical, facial expressions. So here's something I want you to try out, okay. Now... Unfortunately, you might have a little bit of problems getting in touch with the fullness of the the physical sensations that may have been there before you started listening to this may possibly have reduced due to that part of your body listening to my voice getting bored, just like falling asleep, so you don't have the fullness, or, or maybe even hiding, might be hiding from you. But I'd like you to try and get in touch with a part of your body that has discomfort. It could be stress. It could be, it doesn't have to be chronic pain. It could be stress. It could be, you know, because a stress, for me, sometimes a feeling of stress or tightness in maybe my shoulders or my, uh, my lower back sometimes or my neck. Uh, feels painful. It's a different kind of feeling, but it's still, uh, uncomfortable. And when it starts to unwind, when it starts to, those tensions start to untangle, as it were. It does feel nice, doesn't it? To have that peacefulness because your mind slows down. And it's a nice feeling. I know it's sometimes if you get into that frame of mind where almost some people become their pain. They become their suffering. Uh, and we don't need to. We don't need to become it. You can have it without becoming it. You know, it's not a lifestyle. It's not not a lifestyle choice. It's, and I don't mean that disrespectfully, but it's. I think sometimes, and I understand, I understand why, but sometimes people do just give up. Maybe they feel they've tried everything. No one's tried everything, and. Sometimes doing stuff on your own is 
difficult. Maybe sometimes we need help from outside. And listening to someone like me, for example, or someone else, could be useful, can be useful, can help in a way that help gives you some distance between the physical sensations and your emotional experience so that they're not connected in a way that maybe they used to feel like they were. Like you're not just one thing. There's more going on. You've got lots of emotions. We all have lots of different feelings. So you might have a, let's say, for example, for my lower back, even um, when it's, you know, it's most worst discomfort feeling. I've still got other feelings in my body. I'm just not focusing on them. I've still got feelings in my feet, my toes, my hands, my shoulders, chest, stomach. My, the right side of my lower back, because I, my problem is my left side. I've still got feelings in my upper back, my armpits, my knees, my bum, you know, just everything. This all, my ears, my eyes, my mouth, my jaw, my tongue. That stuff has still got physical feelings. I've still got emotional feelings. You know, so if I, if you think about someone that you care about, that you love, or even someone that you don't like, you've got emotional feelings about them. There's still other feelings going on. This, that feeling in my lower back, on my left side of my lower back, it's not the only feeling I've got in the world. That is not my life. No matter how much discomfort it is not my life. There's more going on than that. Now, if I give that all my focus, then it can seem like that's all that's happening. It could seem as if that's all I'm feeling, physically feeling, when it isn't though. And there's also that feeling sorry for ourselves. Now, I'm coming from a perspective of I've spent much of my, not so much of my life, but I've spent a lot of time feeling sorry for myself over the years. I have. I'll admit to it. And some people like to say, no, I never feel sorry for myself. And it's funny because if you know that person, you can almost laugh inside because you know they do. It's usually the people that feel most sorry for themselves they keep going on about how bad things are for them, that will say they, know, they don't feel sorry for themselves. It's kind of ironic, really. I still feel sorry for myself sometimes. I sit down and I think, oh, if only that hadn't happened. Why me? And I'll be honest, sometimes it's nice to have that, just to have that little... um it's not a positive thing, I don't think. But it's almost like a break, you know? It's just a, it's just a, a little time of feeling sorry for myself. But then during that process, it doesn't feel nice. Maybe it's necessary every now and then, but not every day, not all the time. And I say all the time, nothing's all the time. No one feels any way all the time. Oh, I've always got this fear. No, you haven't. That's the thing, you haven't. Because we get distracted. It's very easy to get distracted. 
And when you're asleep, you don't know how you're feeling when you're asleep because you're asleep. We don't have the same emotions 24 hours a day. It's not, it's not even possible to have that. That's just not the way humans work. It can feel like that sometimes. You know, people say, oh, I'm always angry. No, you're not. You do seem to be angry a lot, but you're not always angry. I've seen you have a good laugh. I remember I, when I was a counsellor, one of the most depressed people that ever came to see me used to laugh during the during the sessions. Loved watching comedy shows, you know, stand-up comedy, things like that. And he used to laugh. And in that same 50-minute period that we were sitting there, he'd tell me how he never laughs. Yeah, he watches comedy shows. And how bad things are. And, oh, I always feel the same. Well, you just, it, you just show me physically that you don't always feel the same because you were laughing five minutes ago. You can't laugh and have the opposite feeling at the same time. You might be able to go back to that feeling very quickly. You can't have both at the same time. Just like feeling deeply relaxed and having physical pain. The, t the two don't fit together. When you feel physically relaxed, you don't care about physical feelings because when you're deeply relaxed it's not just your body that's relaxed it's your mind so how does how how is it possible for a danger danger signals to be sent to your brain it isn't because your brain's not accepting them but first of all your body's not going to send them and even if it did your brain's not susceptible to that because it's relaxed as well your mind is calm. So that whole process is pretty much disrupted. And that idea, I just find that whole idea, so pain signals are not sent to the brain. Danger signals are sent to the brain. Now this is neuroscience. This isn't me. Well, it is me. Hi, I'm Jason. It is me, <laughs> but it's not my idea. This is not my information. What I do with that information and when I talk about it, yeah, that's my uh, perspective or that's my take of it. But this is neuroscience. This is science. This isn't make-believe or something I'm just making up. This is a science okay neuroscience and this is up to date and this is from the specialists the world's greatest chronic pain specialists these are the people that i study so you know it's this is uh, i think it's fairly useful information So when you've got that idea is, you know, we, we have an injury, we get the, we send those signals of danger to our brain. Now the signals that get sent to the brain is pretty much our reaction to the injury, our emotional reaction. So with chronic pain, because we're just fed up with it. We've had enough of it. We want it to stop. There's maybe a, that big emotional reaction, which gives, which sends those signals of danger to the brain. Even though there's no danger. 
There's absolutely no danger from my lower back arthritis. There's no danger at all. There's no danger to my health, to my well-being. There's no danger to my body. This is just a physical condition that is just, you know, age, probably age-related, uh, just, you know, just the way it is. I'm 52. We've all got something wrong with us. Everyone. Might not be aware of it, but we've all got something that isn't perhaps perfect. You know? Which is fine. It's just part of being alive. It's hu- being human. It's normal. No one has a perfect body. Okay, mine's nearly perfect. 99%. But you know, I'm talking about you, you normal humans. I mean, I'm being a supermodel and all that. <laughs> but can you imagine if anyone's listening to this and taking me seriously? He thinks he's a supermodel. He thinks he's perfect. So, so my lower back. And you can ask yourself about your situation. Ask yourself about your situation. So if you've got uh, chronic pain in uh, wherever, because, you know, we need to, I mean, I guess maybe I need to point out the difference between acute pain and chronic pain. Uh, I think we all know this, but it's, I think the jargon's a bit, can look, be a little bit annoying for people. Uh, acute pain is, that would be, you know, the cut on the finger. That's acute pain. That's immediate due to injury. Uh, and acute pain, if someone's had an operation, that's acute pain. Acute pain, uh, appendicitis, you know, appendix burst, that's acute pain. A break, a broken bone, uh, injury, physical injury, as well as physical illness, uh, acute pain. Chronic pain is pain that's no longer needed. It's not necessary. So if someone has got arthritis, okay, there sometimes pain is definitely needed. I mean, it's it's the most imp- it's really really important. But I'm thinking of a situation if someone's got arthritis in their ankle and their right ankle, and they need to wear they need to use a walking stick. For example, uh, because the pain, the, 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 uh, let's say the ankle is distorted and it can't have any weight on it. Not because of the pain, but just that, that's the reason it feels that way, but it might physically not be able to have any weight on it. It might not be physically strong enough, uh, for whatever reason. So it might actually be a situation where the person has to not have any weight on that ankle. Um, uh, maybe I'm trying to explain this too much. Now, providing they don't put any weight on the ankle, they don't need that pain. It's pointless. The only time they need that pain is when they put weight on it. Because it's a warning. It's a danger warning. It's like, don't do that. Because... You, you're going to damage it or you could maybe the ankle's weak and it could break or it could uh, cause more damage. So don't do it just in the same way as a broken bone. If you break your leg, you can't put weight on your leg. You can't walk around and your leg lets you know that. Now with a broken leg, uh, with all broken bones, in fact, the pain subsides quite a lot, quite quickly. Now, it's incredibly painful to start with. But it's one of those pains that is it's not chronic pain. Obviously, it's, it's acute pain. And acute pain reduces quite quickly. It might not see, it might not sing quick at the time. But with a broken bone, after a few days... It's, yeah, it hurts much, much less, 
But at the same time, if you touch it, or if you push, if you put weight on your broken arm or your broken leg, try and pick something up with your broken hand, it's might be excruciatingly painful. Danger. It's a danger signal. Because you're not supposed to be using it. Because it's not healed yet. Now with my lower back, there's no reason for those messages to be sent. Oh, don't use your lower back. Because that's the opposite. What I do need to use is my lower back. I need to do exercises. I have to do weights. I need to walk. I need to do things that will help loosen it and keep it strong. And so the rest of my back doesn't get all uh, weak. Because as we all know, you know, you get one part of your body that maybe doesn't work so well and you start, it misaligns your body, doesn't it? You know, someone's got a bad left knee, they'll start putting more weight onto their right knee, which can cause problems for their right knee because they've got twice as much weight on it as normal. Which can also cause the back to be slightly distorted which means the muscles on one side of the back are being used and maybe the other side are not being used. So that the muscles not being used start to become weaker and maybe start to hurt. So, you know, it's, it's I guess it's quite, I was just sniff there, that was nice, wasn't it? Hmm, are you wondering, I wonder what the contents of his nose are. Now you know. So, I, <laughs> grim. So that's one thing. If you, it's worth remembering. It's not pain signals sent to your brain. It's danger signals. And it's not danger in the sense of, it's a question mark. Is this dangerous? Okay. So that the signals get sent to your brain. Your brain literally takes advice from you without asking directly it. It sees well how you're responding. Are you responding more like, oh, no, don't matter. It's just a paper cut. It's just a little cut on the end of my finger. It don't matter. Who cares? Just stop bleeding, please. Because I have things to do. Or if it's a small child... Or someone that does have a, you know, a, you know, a condition which, uh, a bleeding condition which causes, um, you know, with like, where they can't afford to have a cut. So yeah, pain is necessary because they need to get to the hospital. You know, if someone's got a condition where they can't stop bleeding, of course they need to take action quickly. And swiftly and make sure whatever, do whatever it takes for their own personal medical safety and health. But for this to the average person, it's just a paper cut. Not important. But again, a small child might completely lose it. Oh no. I've got, I've got all my, my fingers cut. Oh no. That's one question of a small child. And it could be like the worst thing that's ever happened to anyone ever for 10 minutes. And they might have the worst pain ever for 10 minutes. And then I'll be distracted by something else because it'll stop bleeding like, oh, okay. That was that. <laughs> I'm bored with that now. A good example really is small, talking about small children. And it's still, and I'll probably will talk about this for years. And I, I, everyone must have noticed this. Everybody, as must anyone listen to this, must have noticed this. So it's not a new thing I'm pointing out, and it's not, you know, it's something that I noticed decades and decades ago when I was a kid. In fact, I had a little brother who was eight years younger than me, and I noticed that if he fell over. He'd look, he'd look up to see what response he was supposed to give. 
if you made a fuss of him, he'd cry. <laughs> like that. It was like a little, it was annoying. But if you laughed and smiled, he'd laugh and smile. Now, that is like almost the most basic psychology there. It's, because he gets his cues or she, the little child, gets their cues from you, not from themselves, because they don't see themselves as themselves. They, you know, they're basically copying the adults around them or the children around them as well, I suppose. So then they're not, they are humans, obviously, but they're not really themselves at this point. You know, a toddler is their they're parts of you. They, you know, they're, they're kind of taking on your personality traits, your facial expressions, maybe your mood swings, possibly. <laughs> so I say possibly that means it doesn't, doesn't mean it's true. Possibly. Anyway, I, I noticed that and I thought, hmm. And then I thought, well, that, like now, as I think about it, if we fall over, like I've fallen over a few times. <laughs> I fell out of the bath, fell out of the bath and broke my wrist a few years back. But I've also fallen out of the bath and not hurt myself. Fell out of my bed and um, broke my toe a few months ago. But I've fallen out of my bed and not hurt myself. You know, it's, it's different times. And there's that, there's that gap of time. You know, it's, it's not like when I was younger, I'd fall, if I'd fall out of bed, I'd be up on my feet, regardless of if I hurt myself. Now I lay there for a few seconds, like, oh, not sure. <laughs> Let me do a little body scan. And it was weird because when I broke my toe, I didn't even feel it to start with. I fell out of bed. I bashed my knee. I bashed my elbow. I feel I bashed my shoulder and I hit my toe on my, um, weight bench on my foot on the weight bench. And so I had all these different physical bumps and feelings and I lay, I lay there for a minute. I did a body scan and I really noticed the foot. That was the one that started to throb sort of straight away. And realizing that I'd hit it on the big metal, because I got a very heavy weight bench. It's just solid steel, like the, the base of it. So I, I was just like, oh, okay. And it really hurt. Which it would, it's a broken bone, it's, it hurts, it's normal. But at the same time, I had other things to deal with. Because the reason I fell out of bed is because I got out of bed too quick. And I was going to, I thought my neighbour was in problems, having problems. So I got out of bed, in the dark, too quickly, I was like half asleep, hearing shouting and a little bit concerned. So I thought I'd go downstairs and see if he was okay. In the process, breaking my toe. <laughs> I broke two toes actually, but it's uh, one was particularly uncomfortable. The other one's still clicking. <laughs> it clicks when I walk. It's funny. I don't know why it's funny. And... I didn't have time to feel sorry for myself. I didn't have time to give to that whole danger because there was no danger with my foot. I was focused on something else. I didn't have time, so I put my shoes on, went downstairs and sorted that out. When I came back, 
I realized that my toe, you know, I really kind of like could give it attention. And by that time, yeah, it was painful, but it just wasn't a big deal. It, I didn't have emotions for it. My emotions were taken up by what happened downstairs or by my reaction to what I thought was happening rather. And I didn't have, I didn't give any emotions towards my foot that was broken or the two toes. So my big toe is broken and one of the smaller toes is broken. I've also subsequently broken my little toe uh, since then as well on the same thing. I need to move that thing away. I kicked it by accident the other day. Oh man. So I have to, I need to move it out of the way. <laughs> Blimey, I really should learn, shouldn't I? Um, but the big toe, that was a problem. That was, that was very, but I didn't have any emotions connected to it. So it was just sore without being a problem. If that makes sense, it's like, well, I couldn't care. I genuinely just wasn't interested in the big toe being broke. And it was black, it was swollen, and, you know, I couldn't walk on it. And I was hobbling around for, you know, five, six weeks or whatever. But just, it's like, I don't care. Because the initial uh, sending, I guess, sending that message to my brain of danger didn't happen. Because I was busy. I was very focused on something different. Didn't have time. So by the time I did manage to sit down, um, it was just a painful toe. If I put weight on it. If I didn't, really nothing. Just, you know, it, it hurt a bit, but it didn't have any emotional reaction to me. Nothing. So the pain was minimal compared to having emotional, being emotionally connected to it. So here's a technique. It's a different technique, but it's... If you focus on a part of your body that's, if this, oh, just bang my elbow. Oh no, my elbow. Oh, it really hurts. Oh, oh no. No, I'm joking. I haven't done that for years. You know, the, remember when you, you bang your elbow, like the funny bone. Why would they call it the funny bone? No one's ever banged their elbow and started laughing. It's like, oh, it hurts. Anyway. This is, this is a technique. This is an actual technique to change how you feel. Now I realize that some of you will have fallen asleep by now. <laughs> through, through sheer boredom. Some of you may have found that you've relaxed a lot. Some of you may really feel different. Feel, yeah, feel different. Feel, have a different kind of physical sensation. More relaxed, more peaceful. It just might feel different. I've noticed sometimes when I focus on my lower back, and I do, maybe do some techniques, do some, I, you know, kind of give it some thought, give it some energy. The feeling changes into sort of like a mild itch. Not even enough to need to be scratched. Just a mild, mild itch. As I said, not, doesn't need scratching. It doesn't, it's not that kind of an itch. It's more of a, I'm feeling it now, actually, now I'm mentioning it. That's weird, isn't it? It's more of a tingling. 
tingly kind of between a tingle and an itch. Yeah, almost like it's it's not there anymore. It, there's something different there. And the thing that's there, that's replaced it, is just not a problem. It's just there. It's, it's as if the, the pain's taken a break. Because, you know, no physical feeling or emotional feeling can continue all the time. So it has to take a break. And technically, you're in charge in what you focus on. So what you decide to be in its place is up to you. So you can move whatever feeling is in any part of your body and replace it with a different feeling. A feeling that you choose to have. So there's this, uh, there's this, this thing you can do. If you focus on the physical part of your body that maybe is causing distress, okay, if there's any part left, and notice how your facial expression is. So are your eyes, eyebrows down low, you know, are you frowning? Is your jaw tight? Maybe you're clenching your jaw. I'm just going to focus on your face, not the rest of your body, because some people might have their arm, their hands clenched or their stomach tight, you know. But let's focus just on the face. You might have your jaw tight. You might have uh, just just notice your mouth might be closed. Just notice how you feel, how your face and expression is when you think about a part of your body. If you focus on the part of your body that maybe isn't feeling how you like it to feel. And now change your facial expression whilst focused on that part of the body. Change it. So if you're, if you're frowning, lift your eyebrows up. Maybe wobble your eyebrows a bit. Lift them up and down, up and down. Maybe you can, um, Open your nostrils, you know, just moving your nose around a bit. Opening your nostrils. Open your mouth. Sticking your tongue out. Like that. And just making your face different to how it was before. Maybe a big smile. Eee. Uh, that's my, that's the noise I associate with smiling for some reason. Eee. And just do that. All the time focusing on that part of your body. Notice how you, that part of your body feels now. Now that you put on a big, even if it's a fake smile, it doesn't matter. Just put on a big smile, lifting your eyebrows up if they were down before. Maybe sticking your tongue out. Opening your mouth wide. Just notice now that part of the body feels when you change your facial expression. Ah. So what can happen in that situation is it changes the way you feel. And if you include the fee, you know, the feelings in your body, you change how your body is. So if your back is tense, if you relax your back, if you got your hands clenched, you let your hands go. Maybe your, your head might be resting down, looking down. Lift your head up, look up. Look to the side, whatever, just changing. Your physical state, your physical position. You can experiment with that. Let me know how you get on. So I'm going to go. This has been Let Me Bore Your Pain Away. It really has. That's a long old recording, isn't it? This is like an hour long. 
An hour. You're never going to get that hour back, ever. Neither am I. This hour's lost. <laughs> so, I shouldn't say that, should I? So, what you may notice is there's going to be certain things that we repeat. It's a little bit like having a really spicy curry. It repeats on you a little bit. What you might notice is there's something I've said that's been useful. It might only be one thing. But that useful thing will repeat. And you'll think about it later. And maybe you'll think about it tomorrow. Maybe you think about it the next day. And it'll just come into your mind every now and then. And then maybe if it's really useful and really helpful, it may become part of your mind, which then affects your body, giving you more comfort, more peace. So thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself. You deserve to be happy. Be gentle with yourself. Lots of love. Bye.